Okay. So, this is another. Welcome back to Inquisitive Music, and today, um, please don't mind the background noise. Today, we will be, we'll be teaching you guys how to use beatbox effectively. So let me go here. Okay. Now this will be more of a tutorial. So I'll just run you guys through the basics. So um, this is what you'll see when you first load up Beatbox. Now, the first thing to do, before you do anything else, you go to Preferences, and then you just turn on all of these. I'm just going to do that right now. Okay. So here, we, this is what your screen. This is what your screen should look like after you turn on all of these. Please do not turn on light theme, but uh, this is optional, I guess. But you don't really have to. I'm just gonna enable that. So um, the thing is that with this, you have these patterns right here. So this is the first pattern. You can change this up by using the numbers on your computer, or you can just click these arrows up and down, or you could just use two, all right? Same goes for all of these. These are just like the other sides of the piano. So yeah. We have the scale right here. Um, some of you may not know what scales are. You don't really need to worry about them. It's just like how note what notes sound good together and how they're organized and it allows to make certain songs um expert you might want to use that later but for now i think your best option for now is easy with the smiley face you can leave the keyword what it is or you can change it however you like tempo change it you can change it uh reverb you might want to have that up depending on what you're making. Rhythm. Okay, so rhythm. Look at this. See this right here? So I can have... So the minimum I can have is four. And one... And one bar. But... If I make it triplets... Watch this. Wait. So basically... The minimum I can have now is three. And this can change just depending on your rhythm. So it could be six as your minimum. And this allows you to make different songs as well. And free and freehand right here. Basically you can make them as long or as short as you like. It's so like incredibly short. Not sure what you would need that for. Yeah. So I think sticking to four or maybe eight should be good enough. I just do these. So yeah. Um. Anyways. Mm -hmm. So that's what you really need to know is you already, um, this edit, it's basically what you can do to like make your song better. Um, okay, so the, to change the beats per bar, this is basically, you see this, um, the amount of beats per bar, this, this entire section is a bar, sorry, these, these little separate sections right here, that are cut up into eight different pieces, those are beats. And you can add more beats to each bar. It's kind of complex, but here, let me show you. So if I make this 12, see how it's a lot bigger now? So you can basically fit more notes in one bar. This is especially if you want to make a lot longer songs, but there's um, a feature for that as well. So let's go, let's put this back to eight. Now, um, these ones right here, this one, this one, and this one, I think those are the only ones you'll ever be needing for making music. I mean, you can use these. These can be found helpful in some way, but these are most important. 
these are also important and i'll talk about this later change song length now this is basically how long the song is so basically this is an entire bar and how many bars are in one song so this right here is a song and this is 16 bars so if i make this more focus focus on this part right here you can make your song longer so yeah that's kind of what you need to know so now you should be ready to make your first beat but wait you might want to look at these first because this is how you can enhance your um this is how you can effectively use beatbox to its full advantage so now let's go up here so let's say you want to make chords uh, let's pick an instrument and i don't know maybe electric piano one second okay okay <clears throat> What was I? Oh, all right. So I let's say you want to make chords, right? You pick an instrument. Um, I don't know. I hope. I really hope some of you learned music theory. If you don't, go watch a video about it. I'll probably make a video on music theory. Okay, so I'm just gonna make some chords. And okay, just give me a second. So I created some chords. Here we go. This is what they sound like. Sorry, my audio is a little bad. So, anyways, um, these th these sound kind of boring. So let's start with you know. What, I hope you guys know what panning is. Basically, it's it's basically where you hear the sound from. So if I pin it here. Or to the right, it'll come from the right. To the left, it comes from the left. Except you, you get, you get me. And volume to to make it louder or quieter. We'll just leave it here. So filter cut, um, and filter peak. I let, let's look here. So it says increasing this setting emphasizes a narrow range of frequencies based on the position of the filter cut off set setting this can be used to in imitate the resonant bodies of acoustic instruments and other interesting effects the filter preserves the volume of frequencies that are below the cutoff frequency and re reduces the volume of frequencies that are above the cutoff okay you know what i'm not even going to read that look at this the lowest setting feels muffled or dark, and the highest setting feels harsh or bright. So, most sounds that include a, a range of frequencies are from low to high. Beatbox instruments have a filter that allows the lowest frequencies to pass through at full volume, but can reduce the volume of the higher frequencies that are ab above a cutoff frequency. Okay. So, what it says is that, basically, if you... So what I do is that if you put these closer together, they sound more muffled, but if you put them up here, but you can make it so they have an, a dynamic range of frequencies. And you can use and can you can basically use this to make your music more interesting. So let's say I want to get rid of all the higher frequencies. Well, then let's just move this lower and closer to the filter peak. So basically, what it's telling you is that, think of it as like having a, a mountain range and its peak. Well, you have that peak, but also you have a cut. And basically what you're doing is that you're giving the peak more space for higher frequencies or low or little space for lower frequencies i know none of that made sense but if you mess around this enough you'll get it and, I, and it sounds very interesting but i don't really like the boom like that so let's go here filter envelope or all these things. So now we're using harmonics. Now there are these custom instruments where you basically edit the sounds however you want. So um, hmm. 
we'll, we'll start with harmonics first. So harmonics, if you don't know, basically it's basically the highs and the lows in frequency. So these are the lows right here, and these are the highs. So if I add more highs, it's a lot more brighter. But if I make if I add more lows. Or, for, or, or if there are less highs, it sounds a lot lower, almost bass-like. So you can you can you can kind of mess around with it however you want, but like <laughs> I can't really explain harmonics. If you have the time, please go look up a tutorial about it. Okay, I'm not an expert. I definitely know a lot about this. So yeah. So let's go to filter envelope. Now what it says is low pass filter envelope. This setting can dynamically change the filter cutoff frequency over time. Try the different options and see how they sound. Now um basically this is how the note starts. So uh let me go here, mute this. Let me copy this so okay boy oh, ill you just copy over the instrument if you want to copy an instrument you can press copy instrument and then paste it here paste okay so let's say I wanted to change let me just make this like a single note So it kind of has like an acoustic bass sound. If I change this to like maybe a flare, see how see how it sounds different. I actually kind of like this sound. And you can basically use these however you like. And this is how you can make more advanced songs. So yeah, you can mess around with it. I personally like the flare. We have the steady, the punch. Don't worry about that audio. My audio is trash. So yeah, that's that's what you can basically do. And this is kind of where all the good music starts. Like just messing around with these can really enhance your. You can just. It can really enhance your experience in beatbox. So let's move on to transition. Now, I'm pretty sure this is quite self-explanatory. If it's not, let me explain. So basically, seamless is just when two note you're trying to trans transition from one note to another. So basically, this part right here, where it when it ends here and starts here. Like that. Now that's not as smooth, but it's definitely not as like, you know, abrupt. But with hard, it's a lot more abrupt. Now let's try soft. Also the beginning of the note sounds a lot different. It sounds a lot softer. Now this is my personal favorite, how it just slides up like this. I heavily, heavily recommend this for melodies specifically because it just makes your song so much better. Um, these they're pretty good. You can mess around with them. Soft fade, medium fade, hard fade. You can mess with those. I don't use them at all. I'll just go for soft with the chords. Um, I'll also go with the flare. So chords. Basically, this is how when two when chords or three notes that are on the same beat collide with each other, it's how they interact. So if we put this on strum and we put these together. I'll make kind of a strum sound, but if we put in arpeggio. It sounds more distorted. It can definitely go the same for custom interval. 
And Harmony is the one you should probably go for. Now, Vibrados, well, let's look here. This didn't cause the frequency of a note to wobble slightly. Singers and violist, violinists, violinists often use vibrato. Now, vibrato is basically when it goes, Ugh. I'll show you. So, like, heavy. So, that's not arpeggio. That's the vibrato. So yeah, I can basically this is you can basically use this to make your music sound a little more interesting. Especially for the chords. Now interval. Uh looks look here. Some beatbox instruments types can play two ways at slightly different frequencies. The difference between the frequencies is called an interval. This and this setting controls how large it is. When two similar waves play at a slightly different frequency frequency they move in and out of phase with each other over time as different parts of the waves line up this creates a dynamic shifting sound pianos are a common example of this kind of sound because each piano key strikes multiple different multiple strings that are tuned to slightly different frequencies if the interval is large then the waves can sound out of tune or dissonant if the interval is even larger then the two frequencies can be distinct can even be distinct pitches. So basically, I think of it like this. So this is a union. And this is a piano. The, you may not see it, but they actually sound a lot different for octave. So these are basically the frequencies that move in and out of each other. Like that. So you can mess with those as well. Like I say, I'm not an expert at this. I'm just encouraging you guys to experiment and get creative. So, yeah. So, I think we kind of went over the basics of these. Or of the harmonics, exactly. Now, I... I mean... I, I mean, I guess I could do chip wave. I couldn't... I might make a part two to this. So let's go over chip wave. So basically it's the same thing for all of these, but this is different. So look at this, the wave. I'm pretty sure you guys know what this is, chip wave. Big box com comes with sound with some sound waves based on classic electronic sound chips, as well as several unique waves. So these, um, think of it as like chip tune. You can basically make it like a square wave. Square wave. You do this. Hmm. Oh, oops. Oh, let's test it on this. So chip wave. So this is this is square. So that's square. That's no, triangles are mostly used for bass. And this can be used for a lead. Um, I really do like rounded a lot and the pulses. Double saw and double pulse can and, and soft tooth and maybe soft spiky and square could be used for bass, in my opinion. At least that's how I see it, though. So, uh, yeah. All right, last one we'll be going over is uh, pulse width. So basically, let's look here. This setting controls the shape and sound of a pulse wave. At the minimum width, it sounds like a light buzzy, and at the maximum width, it's a shape like a classic square wave. If we move this down, it'll sound a lot more light. Like that. So, uh, yeah. Kind of what you need to know about this. I'll talk about the other ones in maybe a later video. But those are, these are the ones you might want to know first before the others. Look at this. Okay, yeah. So, I have no idea what this is. I'm still trying to learn about it, but it's nuts. So, uh, how about we organize a song? Hmm?
so yeah just give me a while okay so um i've got a bit of a song i got the chords the melody and the bass i mean that's how i like to see it i like to see this as the chords the melody and the bass although it's all it's up to you how you want to organize your music you know so yeah now i'm gonna do the drums now the drums are quite simple it's just it's these that might seem a bit complicated let's see if i can change that to maybe this nope changing my mind so you can change this how you want i want to change the kick You know what, speaking of which, I might as well use the chip noise. Um, so, one thing that I recommend to enhance your drums, especially when you're using 8-bit, that you should have two drum sets. A, regu a, a, reg a regular drum set and a chip noise drum set. So, let me just... Okay. Song settings. Okay, you see these drum where it says drum channels right here. Um, you might want to click make this two, or if it's one, you can just if it's one, you can just make it two by clicking it and typing in, deleting the one and typing in two. Um, same for pitch channels. So basically, these are pitch channels. The one, right, the ones right here. So the blue, the yellow, and the orangish red. You can make more pitch channels. So yeah, but we won't worry about that right now. Okay, so here we go. Let's load in a standard drum set. All right, so the, here we go. Got everything. So let's do that. So let's make our drum set kick. I suggest just making it simple. Though you can go crazy if you're confident about that. I'm just gonna do that. Oh wow. <laughs> Very sorry if that hurts your ears or not. So I'm just gonna make this a little more interesting. I, I like to do this all the time. It's always nice. I'm that that should be good. Now I want to enhance my snares my snares. So I'm just gonna make put a uh some noise over it. See? Also, noise is considered percussion. So yeah, so you got so percussion is like notes, but it's more in the form of drums. So for instance, this, this, and this are the same thing, same waveform. It's just the pitch is a lot higher. So it switch on from here. And it gets higher. So yeah. They kind of clash. And I don't and I don't and I, don't, and I really don't like, want that. I'll just put them on the same level. Um, 
I'll just put these like one of each other. Um, another thing, you should probably lower down the volume of the chip noise just so it doesn't completely clash. Slow it a bit. Sounds like someone's coughing. Anyways, I'm gonna add reverb so that it makes everything better. I think hard is good enough. Um, I'm not, you can mess around with this, but I recommend just keeping it on the default settings because, you know, it's chip noise. So yeah, let's unmute these and put them all together and see how it sounds. So there you go. Um, now if you want to add a little more variation to your song, you can do this. No, wait. So for the, I like to change up my melody so I can just take make this the second pattern and copy this, paste, paste it, copy it, paste it here, and then change it up a bit. So, uh, yeah. Go. Crazy, I guess. So until then, I'll be seeing you guys next time. Bye.